Welcome to the Taking a Breath Podcast with Parker Mays. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's episode of the Taking a Breath Podcast. Before we jump into today's conversation, I want to tell you a little bit about the Taking a Breath community. It's a one hour a week Zoom call that happens at 10 a.m. Eastern time for 18 to 22 year old student leaders and entrepreneurs. If it's something you might be interested in, visit flow.page slash Parker Mays and click join the community for more info. For today's conversation, I'm excited to welcome Caleb Alt. He's an ultra runner and entrepreneur. And back in 2012, he founded his company, Ultra Green, a lawn care company which has now scaled to three locations around the US. He's run almost 50 marathons and 16 ultra races to date. And I'm excited to share his story with you all today. Caleb, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thanks so much for being here and uh, would love for you to tell us, how did this all get started? Yeah, Parker, I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm honored to, to be on your show and thanks for uh, inviting me. So yeah, I was a military brat, traveled around the world. Uh, we moved every every few years. We never stayed in one place very long. So I had the opportunity to really travel the world and see a lot and was exposed to a lot at a young age. Um, but yeah, I went to college and then my trainer at the time, he went and ran a marathon in 2007 and said, hey, 2009 he's like oh we did this marathon last in 2007 i'm gonna do it again you want to do it with me i'm like sure how far is that like 20 miles like yeah i can do 20 miles like no it's 26.2 i'm like oh yeah sure what's another six miles that sounds great (laughs) of course (laughs) i'm strong i can lift a lot of weight um of course i can run a, a marathon right i have no idea how to train i didn't know what i was getting involved in it it sparked um an interest in me to to qualify and and uh to get faster and and i ran that marathon and at the end like anybody who's ran a marathon first time without training it's hard and difficult to walk afterwards you're limping and it's difficult to get up in the morning and get out of the car and (laughs) we like drove right back to michigan after finishing that race and uh when you're getting out the at the aid station or rest stations and rest stops use the bathroom like it was very difficult to get out and move one thing that i'm curious about is you you talk about in your early running journey that community and accountability is so important so what kind of role did that play in you know as you're going through like hardships and and challenges with getting into running how did that community help you to get those goals and hit those times that you wanted to Man, well, community for me was, it was a lot. I mean, it was almost everything. It, it gave me almost purpose because mm-hmm. I like, I love being with people. I love the social aspect of it. I love building relationships and, and it, it holds you accountable. Like when you have a, have a buddy who's running at, at 530 in the morning and you're supposed to meet him, you don't wake up and make an excuse. I can't go. It's like, no, I'm committed to that. So it, 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 for the base, it, it keeps me accountable. And I just, it's fun for me. I love, it's not running. It's, it's running is fun because I surround myself with friends who also enjoyed running. So now we go and have fun going, running 20 miles around the city, stopping at different places. We just have a great time. So who doesn't want to go have fun every weekend for a couple hours and spend time with your buddies? Like when you create relationships and it no, it no longer becomes work or no longer becomes difficult it now is is enjoyable and it's fun and then it becomes then you compete with each other too we go we go to races together we get to get to test your ability and see if what you're doing is working and and then you have to get to um having the community and friends they they encourage you and they support you and they they help when you when you're down or not feeling good and and then when you do win something they celebrate your wins and victories with you and and it's just an amazing aspect of life and and uh and your personal journey if I, I think without friends, is this this life is almost pointless. Yeah, I think it's all about community and relationships and building those relationships. So, yeah, I mean, I guess to answer your question, it, the, I mean, it's, it's the most important thing for me was in fitness and training was the community and the relationships. Because running by yourself, I mean, running is an individual sport. Um, you have to show up, and even without friends and without community, you there's something in, inside you that you have to kind of there has to be another purpose for it. Um, Why are you doing this? Right. Why do I wake up every morning and show up even without the community? So you have to even have more character, more discipline without somebody to help you. But when you have somebody to hold you accountable, it becomes fun. It becomes enjoyable and it's no longer becomes work. 
And what was your purpose? What was your kind of driving why that was getting you out there every day, whether it was, you know, for the, with the people or not, you know, what was that thing that kept you going? You know, you set goals and then when you hit them, you set a bigger goal. Yeah. And my goal, I, I have not hit it yet, but I, my goal was to run a sub three hour marathon. Um, I had a really good opportunity in, in Washington. I ran a 301 and had a lot of difficulties during that race and uh, a lot of different challenges that came up and I, you know, I, I didn't hit my goal. So I have yet to hit that. I have a few more years. I think I can hit it, but that's my goal now. So what is that's, it's just a goal setting a goal and having, and you almost have to put, um, you know, some type of desire on that and, 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 and make it more personal. Like, why do I want to achieve that? Well, because I've always wanted just to say I rest up three hour yeah. marathon, really just to yeah. prove I can, I can do it to myself. It's yeah. just, it's just for myself. Uh, and it's, it is a challenge. Um, but there's a process and you, so just with anything with business or in school or in, in your work, you know, a personal life, you set a goal. Um, and then you, you visualize that goal, obtaining that goal. How, how will I feel if I do that? And it's going to be an amazing experience. So through now, what do I have to do to get there? Um, create the plan. And then when do you want to get there by, is it realistic? And, uh, and then you have to start taking action and stay committed, you know, to, to the process and to that goal. So, um, I think that's with anything in, in life or in business. If you want something, you set a goal. <laughs> is, it, is it realistic? Is it attainable? Uh, what do you have to do to get there? And then you start taking actions to get there. And so you mentioned this a little bit uh, at one point, but when you were, um, you know, your hobby is, is running and running at a, a you know, at a, a high level, you know, really competing and, and working for it and training for it. And I'm curious, you mentioned, I want to do the business and entrepreneurship thing so that, you know, I can also take care of my body, my health, have that time freedom. And I was curious, um, you know, how does that balance look for you? You know, how much time are you spending doing? I, I know you travel. I know you're working. I know you're racing. I mean, there, there's so much, you know, what does that balance look like for you? Yeah, so that's a great question. And uh, I was actually on a call earlier this morning about work life balance and yeah. uh the coach i was talking to is he's like you know he's like get you know you need to stop saying work-life balance this is a work-life blend right mm. work-life blend blend your work and your life together and, and and um so one of the reasons why i also started my business and one is freedom right i value freedom and growth if it's involving freedom and growth i'm there um and having a business the reason why i have my business started my business was to create freedom for myself eventually even though in that process sometimes you become a slave to your business so you have to continue to develop systems and processes and people to help you attain your goals um, and then create the freedom so you almost have to invest you always have to sacrifice something like what are you willing to sacrifice and is the end goal worth that sacrifice and i'm willing to sacrifice time right now when i was younger to hopefully have the freedom later to do the things that I want to do. And if I, if, if I want to travel the world, I'm going to need some type of income. Wait, so there's two ways. Either you become a minimalist and have no wants, needs, or desires and have no bills and live a minimalist lifestyle, or you have to create cash flowing in income or assets that are producing enough cash flow to sustain your lifestyle and right. allow you to travel or allow you to run races and allow you to um, do the things that you want to do. Um, so the reason, again, I wanted to travel, I wanted to race, I want to see the world, I want to have that freedom and spend time with my family. And I have a son now, so even more important yeah. to free my time up. And so I'm trying to create these income producing assets that are, that are passive and I not as actively involved. So I have need to create systems and processes and then manage those to ensure the, the, re, the, the, uh, the outcome. And that's again, going back to model and then mimic and then and then master something so you model it does this work and then is it can you mimic it can you do what i'm doing to get the same results right. and then master it and once you master it then well now i don't have to be involved anymore because i've taught somebody to mimic what i modeled and then they can master it i love that i yeah. love that and and you mentioned your your son is like either just born in the last couple of days or how old is or not born yet no he's born he's 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 gonna be one year um, oh okay 
for, yeah, for some reason, I, I thought I was seeing something that he was going to be like around this time or something. Okay, cool. And um, what, one thing that I was curious about, because a lot of my audience is college age or just younger, you know, entrepreneurial or student leader or younger. And one of the things that we talk a lot about is taking risks while you're younger, which is kind of what you were talking about there. It's that you're willing to invest the time in now because later on you want the financial and the time freedom. And I'm curious, what did that kind of risk look like for you? Did you feel like there was this big leap where you had to really step out or, or what does that look like over the last like few years? Sounds like about, you know, eight, 10 years. Yeah. I mean, you're always taking a risk um, in business, but for me, it was an educated, you know, calculated risk. I was working for a competitor mm. and I was a sales rep for them. So I knew that there was already a need for my service. There's already a market um, that was created. There was already customers. So all I had to do is can basically, instead of sell for them, is sell a product for me. So I didn't have to prove a new concept. I wasn't taking a new product to market. So there's a couple of different aspects there with risk. Like you need to find out, is this a, do you have a good idea? A lot of people are trying to invent the new mousetrap or the new uh, product or a new service that doesn't exist yet. I mean, that's a huge risk because you don't even know if there's anybody out there who even wants it. So you have to prove that concept and make sure that there isn't even a desire for your product. So the marketplace will decide if you have a good idea or you don't have a good idea. Um, you got to let the marketplace decide. If, if you have a great idea, well, who knows is a good idea? I mean, you have you made a sale yet? <laughs> have you sold anybody yet? Yes. Um, so I already knew the, the concept and the idea was something that the marketplace desired because I was already selling $250,000, $300,000 a year for another company. Right. So I just decided... Well, I, there's a lot of bit, the side of the business I did not know I didn't know. So there's always things you know you don't know. There's yes. things you know you know. There's things I know I don't know. And there's stuff I don't know I don't even know yet. So when you start the business, I wasn't really worried about all the stuff I didn't know I didn't know yet. I'm going to find that out along the way. Um, but I did know there was some stuff I didn't know. And then what you do is you go and find somebody else who's already done it. You model it and see what they were doing and how are they doing it. Um, and then you just mimic that and then you master it. So same thing. Um, it's a model. What is the model? How does it work? How does it operate? Do you even understand the process from a sale to the execution, to the collections, to the accounts receivable, to then paying your employees and paying the bills? And what does that look like? So there's always risk. But for me, I felt like if I could sell and pay my bills selling for someone else, I, sh I can bet on myself that I can sell for myself and at least pay my bills. Yeah. And then and then you get to the point where okay, now how much bigger can we get this? And then you bring in all of the other problems that you know you don't even know and then you can take more risks hiring people. You take I take risks every day hiring somebody. Take right. risks every day on even on customers hoping that they pay. Hmm. I take risks every day, you know, buying a truck. I have no idea. I never drove the truck. I'm just going to buy it because, you know, I trust this guy who sold me a truck prior, but it's a risk. The truck might not work. And then what happens? And then you get, you know, um, there's risk is risk is inevitable. And it's all about taking calculated risk and understanding um, doing the math. I mean, a lot of people don't even take time to even do the math and say, what if this and what if that? And what do I need to do to get a return on this investment? If I'm making an investment, is it time? Is it money? Is it energy? How, how do you measure the results? How are you able to, um, you know, track it? So I always tell my employees all the time, if they want to make more money, I'm like, well, if you want to offer or, you know, give me an idea or tell me how we can measure something and track it, then I can pay on it. So if you want to make more money, make sure it's measurable, make sure it's trackable, and then I'll be able to comp you on it. Um, so those are two important aspects of, you know, understanding whether or not your risk is, you're getting a return on that risk, right? You have to be able to measure it and then track it. And do you feel like you were taking more risk when you first started or like these examples of like hiring people and buying, you know, big purchases and expanding to new locations. Like, did you feel like, you know, the risk was you going out, leaving that company and starting your own thing? Or do you feel like there's more risk associated with where you're at now? Yeah. I mean, the biggest saying, a like common saying is the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So the bigger you get, you know, the more risk you kind of take on yeah. and there's more exposure. So now you have other problems that you have to worry about when you're small yeah, the risk is actually not that great. It's only you. Yeah. Well, now I have, you know, 28 employees that I'm risking every day. Right. So now there's almost even more pressure to succeed and to, and, but then you have to be careful when you start getting larger, you got to go back to what worked at the beginning, because a lot of times as they people grow and they gain more money, they get 
more risk adverse. They don't want to lose it. They're trying to contain it and they start building themselves a castle and then they start keeping themselves and hiding themselves away from people. They don't want people to know who they are. They don't want to share what they know. They're afraid to lose what they gained. So they stop taking risks and then they lose everything they got. Anyways. What are some of the things that now you, you know, as a, a, a multi-location and bigger business that's more scaled than, than at the beginning, what are some of those things that you look back? I know you just mentioned, hey, we, we took risks at the beginning. We're still taking those risks. What are those other things where you kind of go back to those basic building blocks that are still going to work for you at, at a larger scale? Well, sales is the number one thing. Like, so it's, if you don't have a sale, sales is the lifeblood of a company. So if you're not generating new revenue and new customers, you're going to die. And you can't just, again, going back to holding on, I don't want to lose these customers. I'm just going to hold these customers and make sure I satisfy all these customers. Well, no, like you can't make everybody happy, first of all. And then you have to take more risk and continue to put yourself out there to get more customers and try different new things and test new things. So you're always trying to test and see how can we get more results and better results and quicker results and how can we get more sales faster, right? And then then it's all about, okay, now how do we take care of these customers? Make sure we have are delivering the product and service correctly and we're delivering an excellent product. And then how can we deliver even, even more of a customer experience to where we, we create a transformation and create a relationship, not just a transaction. So you go from transaction-based, creating transactions, just sell, sell to where you're delivering higher quality results. And, and then you get to a transformation where you're transforming like the relationship, you're creating relationships now with your customers. Well, people aren't going to cancel people. People cancel co com companies, mm -hmm. right? They can't cancel like entities. They don't cancel people. So if you build a personal relationship with your customers, it's less likely that they, they will leave you as long as you're delivering, you know, the quality products. So going back to, to your question, um, is we're going to do, but go back to the basics, right? Is where we're knocking doors, we're, we're, getting sales. I mean, sales is the first step, bringing people into your customer, in, into your company, and then delivering the products and services and making sure that the customers are happy. I mean, it's really, a th I mean, I think that's a pretty simple process. <laughs> just, yeah. just keep focusing on getting the customers, delivering, solving their problem, delivering them great results, and then continue to build that relationship, making sure that they're satisfied with the work that you're providing them. And then you just keep re that. repeating that process. I love sales that. is the most important now, thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I 100. I've started doing some sales stuff for my brand and and for the company that I'm working for, and it's so true. You know, when when the money stops, there's just this clear like oh crap, you know, we, we got to figure out how to bring that motion back. So um, I'm in 100 percent agreement. I totally understand. I want to shift a little bit because there's something that we've been talking about a little bit that you're working on in the fitness and health space, mm -hmm. I know, and mm -hmm. would love for you to share a little bit about that project and kind of what's coming up for you. I, I would love to, to share that with, with a, a wider audience because I'm excited about it. Dude, I'm, I'm really excited about it as well. And again, it's completely different from my business. I, I have a lawn care right. company. I do, you know, fertilization, we control services. Right. And it's fun. It's great. I love grass and I love nutrients and I love taking care of soils and taking care of customers lawns. But I also have a big side that I love the experience and, and the results I've gotten over the health and fitness industry over, over a, a decent amount of time from high school, you know, grade school till, till today. Um, and I love to share that experience I've had. I, I started um, a weight loss challenge about three, four years ago. Um, based on, you know, somebody kind of making fun of my shirt, not fitting right. And it's after winter and you're, you're, you know, anyway, so they were making a joke about, Hey, yeah. Cause I wear small, I wear small t-shirts. I wear size small because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a very big guy, but, um, the guy was joking. He's like, yeah, I don't think you need a, I think you need to get a large, <laughs> I don't think that small is going to fit anymore. Jeez. Um, he was giving me a hard time about backing on a little bit of weight. So I was like, all right, we're going to have a weight loss challenge. Let's put, I'm going to put up my money and I'm going to match anybody who puts their money in and you're going to try to take my money. Cause I'm going to lose this weight. So it was all a very good incentive for me to try to lose weight and get in shape. And I, I had great success and we had a lot of fun doing it. And then during COVID, there was another opportunity because, you know, gyms were closed and people weren't working out. And so last year I threw a weight loss challenge and helped over 70, 80 people lose weight and get Dang. back into shape. And so, so now I'm, I'm like doing it again. I'm like, how can we make this even bigger and better and impact even more people's lives and help people? So one, a couple of friends that, you know, lost 30, 40 pounds and it changed their life. 
Um, now they're, 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 they have new habits. They have new interests. They're doing new things. They're getting new experiences because now they're getting fitter. They're healthier. They can move more. They have, can spend, you know, do more things with their kids. They can, um, they're not having to worry about medication and stuff as much anymore as well, because now they're healthier. They focused on their health and created better habits. Then they're doing their own weight loss challenges now and impacting even more people. So it's a fun experience. So we're having a weight loss challenge. It's going to start May 10th. If, if, if anybody's listening to this May 10th, the weight loss wars. So it was an awesome opportunity for people to get involved in the community. I'm actually doing it for free. Um, if anybody signs up, there's a 13 week challenge. You get a nutrition guide, you get a, a diet guide, um, kind of like a meal plan. Also, you get a, a workout guide, some, uh, some workouts that you can do to continue to increase your fitness. And then there's a lot of prizes that we give away. So there's a, a VIP package experience as well where you get coaches you get teams uh to help you hold accountable we do bi-weekly weigh-ins we have prizes we have milestone awards we have uh giveaways every week for each challenge and then there's a big cash prize at the end for the biggest loser so whoever is basically taking the challenge more serious and is losing more weight it's all based on the percentage of body weight based on your starting weight loss or your starting weight and then how much you lose by the end of the challenge we're going to be giving away um part of the entry fee goes to, to the prize pool so you get a, a big prize so it's a lot of fun um bring on experts every week to have expert calls we have some great guests lined up to share information where about diet nutrition um mindset um physical performance recovery um you know water hydration food you know just a lot of great experts we got some olympians coming on uh people who've qualified for the olympics gone to the olympics train olympians trainers and and um coaches like it, we just got a great group of people coming in and, and helping out and uh, offering their support and advice as well and i just i'm really excited just to be able to help people i didn't realize the impact i was having you know three years ago yeah and i didn't know who was actually being affected and impacted and then you realize people are watching and seeing what you're doing and they want to they you know so i'm really just blessed to be able to have an opportunity to um, share what I know with, with people to help them create better habits and create better lifestyles and, and fitness and, and in their health. Man, I love it. I'm so excited. I, I hope we get some people from here, uh, joining in on it because I, I love that idea of building habits for long-term success, right? Not this temporary thing that we're looking for, uh, but really just building a habit to increase our success over the long-term. If people have liked this conversation, like you want more of you or want to sign up for this, where should they go? So you can actually, uh, Instagram is probably the easiest place to find me at okay. caleb.alt um, on Instagram. Facebook is just be my name, caleb.alt. I think one, if you go to Facebook forward slash caleb.alt um, one um, so i'm available on those platforms linkedin facebook instagram and i have the website actually for the weight loss wars still being launched uh so let me grab that i think it's calebalt.com forward slash weight loss wars we can drop it in the show notes though right perfect yeah absolutely and what i was going to say is so in addition to his instagram which i'll drop in the chat um, I'll also get that link uh, from him and we'll put that in the chat. So if you're interested in this idea, finding out more about it, seeing what Caleb's got going on in his uh, personal life, professional life, uh, check out his Instagram, check out the link in the notes and, uh, and we'll get all the information there for you guys. Caleb, it has been fantastic. I, I love hearing your story. And, and every time that we get to talk about your challenges, your successes, it just inspires me to continue growing. So um, I just appreciate your time today, my friend. Hey, Parker, I appreciate you having me on. And I, I, I'm glad I was able to share with you. Of course. All right. Well, hey, everybody, if you uh, if you're listening right now, thank you for making it to the end of the episode. I wanted to uh, give a shout out to our Instagram at taking a breath podcast. We'll have clips from this episode and every episode on there where you can check out little bits and highlights and keep up with what's going on. And uh, other than that, we will see you again next week for another episode. Thanks for listening to the taking a breath podcast with Parker Mays. 